All right, welcome everybody to our session on uh, building and using the security tool belt. Uh, it's an open SSF project that um, we're going to share with you today. So, uh, first off, a little bit about us. Uh, I'm in the middle there. Uh, John Shell, for pronunciation for my last name, is Scandinavian, so not at all like the KJ uh, that's there. Uh, I have an adverb. I just modify things, so I don't actually do anything else. Um, uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, and I'm a, a director in, at a startup, so like half of us are directors. Uh, and I enjoy lots of hoodies, so it's about the only thing I wear in Minnesota. It's perfect in the winter, the summer, it's, it's good. So. Sarah Evans, um, I work at Dell Technologies, and I am an Air Force vet. I have been very involved in OpenSSF the past uh, two years. Um, this operation or this uh, special interest group that we're going to talk to you about is something that's very near and dear to my heart. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing kind of six months in the security tool belt. Hey, everybody. I'm Krobe. I uh, do stuff on the Internet. I uh, had the illustrious responsibility to help uh, herd all the cats to get this effort started. So we will uh, dive in a little bit here. We're going to talk a little about the origin story of the project and kind of some of our goals and uh, desires and dreams. We're going to talk about a very interesting persona is one of the key things we're trying to address as part of our toolbed efforts. There are a couple personas we're trying to uh, help out, but there's one in particular that uh, raised a lot of attention for us and we're trying to uh, directly uh, work with. We have, uh, we'll talk about where we're going. We're going to talk about a proof of concept. And then ideally we'll have a, a call to action and some time for questions if anybody has it. So much like every good superhero, you, you have to have a really cool origin story. So the security tool belt, as we now uh, lovingly call it, like every great idea, started off with a bar napkin in a bar over some refreshing adult beverages. Uh, about two years ago, the OpenSSF Governing Board was trying to help uh, provide some momentum and direction of you know, how we wanted to address open source uh, supply chain and uh, maintainer security. So uh, they had this wonderful idea called the Sterling Tool Chain. And uh, the community had a lot of very visceral uh, negative reactions towards that concept, right? And it, it took us a while to uh, think through things, and we eventually reframed it thinking about trying to provide a set of tools and processes and good practices, something that people could carry around with them everywhere, like a tool belt. And we Security tube was the second name, and that got knacked pretty quick. <laughs> and that enters uh, what we lovingly now call the, the Goosatron. And the Goosatron, uh, in it, we describe a series of security capabilities that we feel are important from software creation through uh, composition and build and deployment. And then you move into the consumer space, so how consumers can securely ingest things, deploy them, and then ultimately thinking about maintenance and retirement. So collectively, this is our security tool belt model. And what is it? We're looking at eight, nine capabilities we're thinking about delivering as part of this, uh, uh, ideally, like a, a reference implementation, and then ideally some practical uh, learnings we can do by working with maintainers and projects to actually implement some of these things. And we'll talk about some of these a little bit more in depth as we move along. Do you want to talk about our friend? Yes. All right. So as we started to dig into the way OpenSSF has organically grown over time, we found that we had various working groups that were covering different parts of the potential security tool belt. 
So we did not want to reinvent the wheel. We wanted to build on the strong foundation that our community, our security community had been coming together to develop. And so we said, well, let's document what we have. Let's talk about what current state looks like. And so the first question we had was, well, who's involved? Who are the personas? Who are the people who would care about potentially leveraging these different security tools? And then what are their use cases? What are, they, what are those personas going to try to do? And then why are they going to try to do it? Where are the, the potential tools that fit into those capabilities? What are the threats around using those? Do we have gaps? So we wanted to be able to kind of really logically approach the kind of the full spectrum of the way we were thinking about open source software security. And so um, one of the things we started to do was on our uh, GitHub page, we have developed personas. We started with the vulnerability disclosures working group already had a really good list of personas and we built on that. And one of our asks, one of our action items that we'll have for you uh, later on in the in the presentation is going to relate to helping to continue to build and define these personas based on your experience, based on how you use uh, technology and, and your use cases and who you are, we can continue to build these out together. And so one... Uh, is the next slide going into, yes, okay. So as we were collecting feedback from the community, um, we had this idea that we would have a maintainer. Well, what, what are the types of different maintainers out there? You might have someone who works for an enterprise whose part of their day job is to go maintain a project. We had various different types of maintainers, but we did have a very um, a good dialogue on attack, a technical advisory council issue about the type of maintainer that has become known as Diana the Weekend Warrior. So Diana has maybe two hours a week uh, on a Sunday afternoon, time they could be spending with their family. Um, they've taken a little time away for a passion project and they're working on a uh, code, um, adding features. And so we've got some really good um, information about who is Diana and, and what uh, does Diana care about. Um, again, this is uh, all available on our GitHub to continue to add to and to refine, but we found that this use case in particular was very compelling because the OpenSSF was a, um, is a group of large companies that have come together to do the right thing and to help improve the security of our open source software. We work with um, people who are developing public policy, but we also have this core tenet of supporting developers and the different types of developers that are out there in our supply chain. So how do you have these conversations when maybe your experience isn't exactly the same experience as the people that you're working with? And so documenting these and being conscious of these is very important to us. And we really feel like making it easy for Diana the Weekend Warrior to do security in the code that they're developing is a very, very important stakeholder that we're actually starting with our first proof of concept on. Um, a few years ago, we had a member, uh, Josh Bressers from Anchor, uh, had a, uh, a, he had an itch he wanted to scratch. So he went through and did some data analysis on maintainer types and he, uh, there, there will be a link, I can get you a reference to it, but basically Anchor did a report and it's on the order of there are millions of single maintainer projects. So we feel that Diana is a generally a very common persona that exists within our ecosystem. And they have you know, a lot of really unique challenges. And it's not all security. Um, it's predominantly managing, wrangling with their tool chain and trying to manage dependencies. Sure. Uh, so, you know, as, as you've heard, this uh, work is part of the OpenSSF, the Open Source Security Foundation. Um, and there's a ton of different things going on in, in this group. And sometimes it can be challenging to figure out, uh, like, what are the different things happening in many different places? Uh, what's the structure of the, the foundation and, and everything going on? So here you can see many different working groups many different projects under each of those working groups. Uh, if you're not a project, there's a special interest group like this one. Um, there's an evolution to the names of all of these things as well too, but in the end, uh, it's 
kind of like whose line is it anyway. It's, it's all made up and it just doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is what's the value do you get out of that? What's the thing you're interested in? How can you show up where to, to help you know, in a way that's meaningful to you and also something that you're interested in? Because this is a community-driven organization, so we want to welcome everybody and uh, allow you to contribute wherever you want to. So uh, the idea with the security tool belt is use all the tools and we turn them all on and you have every tool. Uh, and what, what happens? Uh, it, it, everything blows up pretty quickly. Um, if you decide that you're going to use um, scorecard, for example, or a GitHub action and it enables or tells you that you shouldn't enable code QL and you start doing static analysis scanning. And the default configuration for CodeQL doesn't work with the particular programming language that you use. So now, after you spent the time and effort to turn on one thing, you've gotta go and fix the next thing. Um, and then maybe you finally get CodeQL enabled and then you end up with all sorts of results. Here's 20 different vulnerabilities that were found in the code. Now you've gotta go and fix those 20 different things. And that's one of the many different recommendations of Scorecard. Um, and then that's also one of the tools out of uh, the overall set of, of things that are offered. Um, so really we need to consider, and this is the, the reason and the importance for effort, like looking at the personas, understanding what are the needs and the capabilities of people to really rise up to this Emer you know, not really emerging anymore, but the threat um, against their, their software and supply chain security. Um, the, you know, the other part about this that comes up, especially with the, um, the Diana, Diana persona, is where are you building these things? Um, we have this conversation in many different groups. Uh, the Salsa specification is one example. Uh, there's a requirement in order to reach a higher level um, of a Salsa um, build compliance to have a hosted build service. There are a lot of people out there that think their personal server in their basement doing their builds for whatever their project is, is more secure than the cloud. The, the cloud is somebody else's computer, right? You can't see it, you can't touch it. I know the one in my basement is disconnected from the internet, no one's broken into my house. I can trust the source code that comes in and the build product that comes out. There's problems, obviously, with how you convey that trust outside of your house or your basement. But there's, you know, a need to serve all sorts of tooling, right? As a group trying to support open source primarily, first and foremost, um, you know, there's a lot of proprietary, or even if they're open source tools, there's still paid tools that are not available for free for these maintainers spending a couple hours on the weekend. They don't make any money from these projects. They can't pay for, for any of these things. And one, one of our key goals is the OpenSSF recently spun up a DevRel community and we're doing outreach to maintainers to kind of hear their stories, hear their perspective on things. So going forward as we uh, continue to work on things like the proofs of concept and improving our documentation like around process and training things. Um, ideally, our DevRel community will help provide us with additional information around our personas, our use cases, and then also kind of thinking through some of the threats. So are there gaps in our proposed solution and that we need to uh, react to? All right. So there is a proof of concept for those of you who are interested in helping to code. Um, we've done a lot of talking and a lot of getting to this point where we want to actually develop a proof of concept. And so we wanted to pull out, put out this proof of concept to the open source community here. Um, looking, at the under, looking at understanding the needs of maintainers, the needs of end users, and then understanding where these gaps are. So... If it's not easy to do something and we have limited time, um, we just might not do it. And so we want to we want to understand what are those what are those challenges and how can we actually improve to make it easier to, to leverage those tools. And so we are coming up with a proof of concept that will allow us to uh, experiment with the maintainer community on make if we make these changes and if we make these different. Um, connection points within the way the tools in OpenSSF operate, does that make you more likely to adopt them? Does that make your life easier? 
because there are people that are consuming the software that have very interesting questions that they want to start asking of the data, but it's this chicken and egg problem. If it's hard to generate the data, if it's not, um, if it's not seen as a value add to the person who's creating the code, then how will it be available for the consumers? And so that's where, really where OpenSSF and our sp specific proof of concept is designed to come in and actually start doing something about that. All right, so um, you know, there's. I think the first part of the the proof of concept is uh, a pretty manual effort, actually, of like, let's go and turn on the tools, let's work directly with the the contributors, the maintainers, and help them. You know, unblock them as they raise concerns or problems. Uh, we have to find the right set of people who have the time and effort and energy uh, to do this. There's um, a. Per you know, so, we're, so if anybody here has has that time or energy in an open source project, we'd be happy to work with you um, on that. Uh, the other thing that we want to be able to do, uh, or we likely will do, is work with a slightly larger product or a more established organization where it's maybe not that actual uh, weekend warrior maintainer, but we can still learn the same things from other people who are being paid to work on the project or other things like that where they have the time and effort to help us uh, enable these tools to work together better. Uh, so once we do all of that, we have to kind of um, figure out how to abstract that, how to do um, actually enable this across uh, those you know, people who don't have it, as much time and energy. And so this is kind of a, you know, a deep dive into it, one of these capabilities. And you know, Sarah mentioned generating evidence. Um, what's the sort of information we need to collect when you're doing each of these things that will help us prove you actually did the thing. Because if you just do it um, and we don't know that you did it, it's you know, like a tree falling in the woods, right? Did it really fall over? Um, and so, you know, looking at each of these things, what is the, the intent of that stage? So the intent of a build pipeline or, or a build step is hopefully clear is you want to make an artifact. You have something binary, a shared library, a container image. What are the things that we need to know about that process to give you confidence in consuming that? And so the most obvious thing here is your Salsa build provenance. That's a, you know, a separate project in OpenSSF that will tell you things about where the artifact came from. It actually came from the CI CD pipeline, the GitHub workflow that you can see. It didn't come from a you know, server in someone's basement when it was supposed to come from the, the GitHub workflow. Uh, and there's a ton of other things to do there. You should generate an SPOM for that. You should do a vulnerability scan. There's a lot of these different things. And so that's one of the, the next things to kind of figure out is how we can uh, kind of specify what that, that API is, that layer of abstraction uh, on top of the different capabilities and how we communicate that. And, and how our model is constructed is we have nine uh, security capabilities that we feel should be delivered as part of a creation through retirement process within the starting with the software factory, the developer and all their tools and pipelines and uh, publications, and then through the uh, down to the consumer level. So in this particular slide, as John was alluding to, we're looking at particular these, you should deliver a secure build slash CI capability. Underneath each of those capabilities, we identify a series of patterns that support that. So for the secure CI capability, we think things like uh, trusted automation, software integrity, uh, tamper checking, SBOM, scanners, uh, security compile, a secure compiler. These are all patterns that help support that secure CI uh, capability. And then below that, we identify a series of projects. And in particular, the first one we said is Salsa helps deliver these patterns. So that's the pattern in implementation. And ideally, we'll get into in the future as we start doing this, actually have documentation, we'll have uh, automation. Ideally, we'd love to have um, GitHub Actions or the amalgam in GitLab or other source repositories to be able to automate this stuff for the maintainers and also automate it for downstream consumers. So this is the, the full diagram and you can see all those different steps. You can see all the different patterns, all the different projects and the big red stop sign of the current gaps, uh, which 
they're sized the same across all the different columns, but that's uh, not drawn to scale. <laughs> some, <laughs> some columns have bigger gaps than others. Uh, and then the, the second to last row down there is reports and attestations. So what is that, that evidence that should be created for each of these steps? Um, and this row actually should probably be also a giant red stop sign as well, because we're not actually generating attestations or reports for many of these things. Or, you know, my personal preference would be much more towards the side of a signed, trusted attestation, an actual verifiable piece of evidence, as opposed to just a report. Um, and then along the bottom, there's some really new and interesting emerging ideas around cross-cutting capabilities, things like supply chain metadata storage. So projects like Guac fall into this category. You generate all this evidence, all this data, where do you put it? How do you get it from one step to the next? How do you convey this information to consumers? Um, we have the same problem with SBOMs, right? Where do you put your SBOM? How do you know where it goes, where it came from? And so uh, that's another you know, integration opportunity with other projects in OpenSSF. And then the last one is the supply chain control plane, which is, you know, how you communicate between steps, how you communicate and summarize the entire system. So we've got a couple animations here. This is um, incredibly complicated, obviously, for that weekend warrior. So how do we simplify this whole thing? How do we make it usable? And even not just the weekend, even, even if you work at an enterprise and you have a team of people to do this, it's still way too complicated. Um, and so can we up-level some of these ideas? How can we understand the intent that we want to convey, produce the evidence in a way that we don't have to care about the tool that was used? Do we care which open source tool you used for generating a vulnerability scan? We don't care if you used Trivi or Gripe or something else. The same thing with your SBOM. What we care about is that that scan had a certain set of properties. It used a vulnerability database that was updated within the last 24 hours or the last week. Um, that you didn't pass in some arbitrary flags that meant it excluded you know, all of the critical vulnerabilities for some reason or, or different things like that. Um, and then we need to verify that. How do we create a system to verify that? We already, with Salsa, have the concept of a verification summary. And so how do we extend that idea to these different capabilities? And then at the end, we have to summarize all of those different verifications for each of these capabilities and then communicate that. Everything to the right in the green is about a consumer. So how do you do a secure ingestion of this? And then finally, one more uh, click here is enable the consumer to do the exact same thing, right? They're going to go through this whole process. It's all recursive um, and goes on forever, turtles all the way down, as we say. And so here, you know, uh, in Toto, uh, not an OpenSSF project, but is a, a CNCF project. Um, it is the, the specification that's used for Salsa attestations. It's something that's used by GitTuff and SBOMIT, other OpenSSF projects. And it gives us this standard way of communicating uh, this set of information. It gives you a consistent way to know how things are signed, how they should be verified um, from a, a structural standpoint. And then it enables you to not worry about those things and dive into the details of the metadata that was collected. How do I inspect the information about the vulnerability report or the, the SBOM without having to worry about it being signed in a different way or transmitted over the, the wire in a different format. So it standardizes all of those types of things. call to action. Why are we talking to you about this today? We have three things we're trying to do. The first thing we're trying to do is if you looked at that Goosatron, there's nobody who has every step of that memorized. There's nobody whose job it is to do the entire full spectrum scale of beginning to end. So what we need is the community to come asynchronously participate in discussions on our security tool belt GitHub and start to build out the persona you are familiar with, the use cases you are familiar with, the open SSF tool you might be familiar with, so that we can begin to crowdsource and collect and document some of this information all in one place. And that helps us then take the information that we receive across the different, the, the scale of OpenSSF and say, all right, now how are we going to dial in and make that easy for different personas? How are we going to 
pass that information along to the different people who need it. So we're trying to take this next step with your help and the help of your colleagues to begin to document. And you can see, if you go into our GitHub and you click on the personas or you click on the use cases, there are works in progress. And so if you, um, there, there we have discussions enabled. Um, once we get to a certain point when discussions, we'll start an issue and eventually do pull, pull requests. So we would really appreciate everybody's participation in helping kind of document and connect all of these different pieces to each other based on your experience. And one of our core values, while um, the OpenSSF has a lot of great knowledge and a lot of interesting projects and tools, we understand we are not the exclusive uh, domain of all the things security. As John mentioned, Intoto is an amazing project. It's OpenSSF adjacent, but we are open to if anyone has suggestions on how do I deliver the, a secure publication capability if there's tools we're not aware of we always prefer uh, open wherever possible, but if there is a commercial tool that might be an option for people, we might mention that. We're not going to take a lot of time in investing documentation on it, but if you're aware of things, tools, processes, trainings that might uh, help support any of this, you know, patches and suggestions are always welcome. All right. Um, the next thing that we do is synchronously we meet um, once we meet once a week and we are actually working on talking about what does that proof of concept mean for making things easy for the persona of Diana the Weekend Warrior to um, do the coding that they are already going to do and make the security components seamless and kind of behind the scenes. So right now, uh, while the tooling itself exists, it's not seamless and available behind the scenes. And that's something that we're looking to change in our proof of concept. Yeah, and if you're not interested in the, the bigger commitment, just take any two tools from OpenSSF and, and turn them on. Uh, you won't have to figure out, like, if something doesn't work, which one of the tools is the problem. Just let us know, and we'll go to those teams, help figure that out for you, help, uh, help them understand the, the problems with the interactions between them. Uh, and then, uh, I, I was just say the, the last problem here, or the, the last part here, um, you know, creating this, this extra layer, uh, level of indirection, right? It solves all, all problems in computer science. Um, you know, we're going to have probably a different set of interests from folks in defining um, capability intents. How, what's that API around the different capabilities, those different columns? Uh, if you're really interested in security tooling, static analysis scanners, SBOM generation, build processes, whatever they are, you could help define just that one thing and make a, a contribution in that way. If you're really interested in the, you know, holistic uh, control plane, how you communicate across all these boundaries, how you stitch everything together. That'll be kind of another separate thing. We'll have opportunities in each of these areas for contributions. And, and this has been a really cross-disciplinary effort. Uh, we have uh, developers and maintainers. We have policy folks. We have architects. We've had threat modelers. And everyone's kind of brought in a unique perspective and helped us start to uh, cobble together these different ideas. Um, we spent a lot of time on threat modeling, trying to identify the potential ways to break a uh, open source supply chain, soup to nuts, and we got some expertise from a lot of people that do professional threat modeling. But there's still a lot more work to do. Uh, I'm personally focused on the secure developer capability. So I'm focused on how can we get developers training to help improve their skill set? How do we help them embed process and uh, being able to identify uh, areas where you potentially get into uh, a nasty security space. And then we're also collaborating with our partners in the end user working group within the OpenSSF, where we have people from corporate enterprises, and they're providing us feedback from a very end consumer perspective. What challenges do they have? What types of things are they interested in seeing out of the whole uh, chain up and down? And I think um, that raises a, like a, a common experience that many open source maintainers have is there can be a very large sense of friction between those consumers, especially if it's a enterprise selling software, making money off of that software using a free uh, piece of open source. And so I think there's a, a really great opportunity for us to help bridge that gap between the two groups. Um, 
if someone is generating an SBOM or not running a security scanning tool and an enterprise sends them an email, files an issue and says, my scan report says your project has these 18 vulnerabilities. I have a new release going out tomorrow. Please fix them ASAP. Like you're never going to get a good response from, from a maintainer. And that also discourages them from even doing that work in the first place. And so we want to help stop that. We want the open source to be more secure and it is going to require effort for us to bridge that gap. And finally, this is something that we've been talking about with our DevRel community. One of the one of the points that a couple of maintainers who've shown up to the call have talked about is how sometimes um, developers aren't always aware of the benefits of secure development. And so we wanted to make it very, very easy for um, people to go talk in their local communities at a DevOps days or at B-sides or, or you know, at an OWASP meetup and kind of talk about um, open source software security without having to come up with a deck on their own. And so this is something that really excited the DevRel community to be able to kind of crowdsource a presentation with speaker notes that anyone could take in, in, a, in a distributed way go and present that um, in a way that's meaningful uh, to them and to their experience. So if you have any interest in contributing to that, um, that would be really helpful if you know of, you know, perhaps you're learning about some content yourself and you want to take what you've learned and contribute that, that piece. Um, you know, why is MFA important as an example uh, might be a good uh, piece to add. So I, I just wanted to, um, we're just trying to crowdsource here with our open source community what we're learning about um, security and how we can share it with others around us. And our, all the links, ways to participate. Um, we've been trying to do a lot of our communication through GitHub. So you can get to it, OpenSSF Security Tool Belt. Um, and, and you'll see we're starting discussions, we're starting issues, and we're starting those, those pull requests so everything is available and open and transparent. And, and the, the very last uh, link on there, be, become an organizational member. If this sounds like a, a super exciting thing that your organization would love to support uh, and you've not joined the OpenSSF, uh, you can bother Harry in the back of the room there and he'd be more than happy to talk to you. <laughs> and uh, outside of the, the tool belt is an attempt to try to articulate all the different efforts going on across the OpenSSF. And uh, each one of those is potentially represented by a unique working group. We have a whole supply chain integrity working group where things like Salsa and S2C2F are being uh, created and maintained and updated. So if you have an interest in any of these open source related security topics, chances are somewhere in the foundation we have a group of people that are thinking the same things. We would invite you to kind of reach out. And again, this helps summarize a lot of the different ways to get a hold of us. And our uh, link for this particular effort is uh, GitHub OSSF uh, tool belt. Uh, we have, again, as everyone's mentioned several times, we have issues, PRs, and discussions enabled. We have a mailing list. We have a very active Slack channel. Please uh, engage with us and share your ideas. And I, I think we have some time for questions if anybody had anything they wanted to uh, ask about it with us. I'll be Donahue. Oh, thank you. Uh, so do you assume that all maintainers would be using GitHub? No. Uh, so the, the, tool be the tool belt assumes that it's any software repository, but it has to be versioned or yeah, I think there would be an assumption that there's a, a version control system. I, I think there's, um, you know, kind of going back to the desire to convey um, intent and, and capabilities. Um, we really want to be able to support any way in which people are doing things, but we may not be able to make as strong a claims about the security of the software or the process they've gone through, depending on what tooling they're using. So, Just real quick. Uh, uh, you mentioned many different ways to become involved, which is great. Uh, uh, you didn't actually mention when the meetings are. Uh, currently, our meetings are every Tuesday at uh, noon Eastern Standard Time. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Yeah. And then depending on, as we're kind of focusing on different, the group is focusing on different topics, um, we may r spin up an additional uh, ad hoc call around a proof of concept or a demo where we're trying to prototyping a concept. But every Tuesday, uh, 12 uh, Eastern, and that information is available on the uh, OpenSSF community calendar. You can kind of get the Zoom details there. Any other questions or comments? This may be like a poke question, but um, why are all your tools written in Go? I would say the, the tools are written by the people who show up. <laughs> and if, uh, if you want to write a tool in another language, um, absolutely would love to have it. We're, we were willing to accept any contributions in, in any form. So, yeah. and, and that's one thing that one of our core tenants is there, we, there is no one common development language. There's no one common development tool across all different types of developers and consumers. So we try to be as flexible as possible. So yes, our foundation leverage is GitHub, but we try to, wherever possible, make sure that we have an analgum uh, in GitLab. And then um, we haven't had a lot of participation in other repositories. So patches there are definitely welcome. If you have some tools or ideas on how to integrate other non-GitHub uh, lab repositories, let us know. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of uh, Open Source North America. Cheers.